good morning, everyone. Good chodesh. And as I said, sorry again for uh, internet problems. Um, so I really would like to try and finish off today the uh, the concept of uh, Cholev, the sugya of Cholev, and uh, the different views of the Rishonim. Um, I summarized last week a, a vast array of Rishonim, um, a, a, a problematically vast array, array of Rishonim, who understand what the Malacha of Cholev is. Um, Rashi said it's Mishum Dosh. Rabbi Nitam uh, spoke about Mamachik. We saw the alternative version in Rashi um, in Dat Sadi Hay, which is really Yerushalmi, that said because of Koitza and various other uh, um, various other Rishonim. Now, I also pointed out that the Malacha of Mamachik, massaging and uh, smoothing the, the udder of the uh, of the cow, is very different to the other Malachas. In that Malacha, it's not about the food which is produced, the result, but it's about the process of Mamachik. And that poses difficulties. Um, the Gemara later on that says that uh, the shear, the measure of what you're hired for when you're cholev is gregeris, which is a measure in the result, how much milk is produced. And also poses difficulties in the Gemara that says there's a distinction with cholev, whether the food ever, the milk ever exists independently or is immediately absorbed into something else. Um, which again, according to the other issue, I mean, that you're producing something makes sense. But according to the Rabbeinu Tam, that it's about, uh, um, it's about mamachik, it's more difficult to understand. Um, I rush that near the end of the shir, and therefore I repeat it, um, simply just to summarize that it, it's important to note that in Rashi, it's a coat, so it's producing a certain sort of, uh, producing a certain sort of uh, um, food, sorry, according to Yerushalmi, it's a coat, according to Rashi, it's a dosh, it's extracting certain sorts of food. So there we understand this is a malacha in the family of the Yud Aleph malachas of Pat, the Siddur of the Pat. According to Rabbi Nitam, it's not a malacha in uh, Siddur of the Pat, um, and therefore this poses uh, difficulties where the sheer kota comes from. Um, be that as it may, um, it, let's, let's move on to the view of Rashi and those Rishonim who go with him. And it's not just Rashi, as I pointed out, this is uh, many Rishonim, the Rosh, the Rif, the Rambam, many of them hold that the explanation of Al-Gamara is that Cholev is Chayev Mishum Afarik, and Afarik is a tolder of Dosh. Now, Tosfus asks on this that um, Dosh is only Begadole Kaka, or it's a Machlokas, at least, whether it's Begadole Kaka or not. And Tosfus understands that the simplest view is that Dosh only applies to things which grow from the ground. In which case, asks Tosfus, how can Dosh apply to Cholev, to milking? An animal is not Begadole Kaka, it doesn't grow from the ground. Now, which Malachas does the rule of Begadole Kaka apply to or not? Again, I refer you back to the previous share we discussed. Why is it that no one talks about cooking as only applying to Gedudah Kaka? No one asks, are you chayah for cooking an animal or not chayah for cooking an animal? Um, everyone understands that uh, Gedudah Kaka is, a rule not, it is not a rule in Bishal, but is uh, perhaps a rule in other things. And we discussed how it's somewhere along the process between uh, the agricultural process. At some point it switches, to be, it switches from being a malacha in the things that grow from the grounds. Zoreya and Choresh and Kites are clearly linked to the grounds. Um, as opposed to when you get to the later malachas, which are malachas done in, cre in the food, and therefore gedole kaka ceases to be a relevant uh, factor. Either way, there's a machlokas about dosh. The machlokas finds its place in the next stuff, where it talks about chilozen, and how dosh applies to extracting the blood of the chilozen in the production of tcheles. And Tosas here asks on Rashi, how can there be a malacha of dosh, or mafarik, with koitzer, with Cholev, when a uh, Cholev is in an animal. Now, Tosus alludes to a possible, more than alludes, he, he says a possible answer to Rashi. He says two possible answers to Rashi. Possible answer number one with Rashi, to Rashi is that Rashi holds that this is going according to the Manda Omar, who holds that there is Disha even not in the Kaka. After all, the Gemara later says um, it's Machlokas, and therefore maybe Rashi here is explaining the Duff according to the opinion that Kotsa even applies to things which are not growing in the ground. This is problematic on two counts. Firstly, based on the normal Klali Halacha, this wouldn't appear to be the Psak, number one. And number two, it turns out then that Al Gemara is only going according to one opinion, not the other opinion. And normally we would expect the Gemara to point out, if it makes a statement that gets caught up in a Machlokas, we would expect the Gemara to point out that what it's saying only fits in one opinion, not with the other opinion. But either way, that's a possible technical answer to Rashi. Technical answer number two is to get into the issue of maybe a Behemar is a Gedolei Kaka, 
And we do find this discussed exactly what do we mean by Gedore Kaka? Does the term Gedore Kaka mean things that literally grow from the ground, like fruit and wheat? Or does it mean even things that grow on the ground, and therefore maybe an animal, uh, 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 certainly a uh, herbivorous animal that primarily eats from the ground, maybe would be called Gedore Kaka? And this would be a second answer for Rashi. And uh, Toysa says this is difficult, and he brings Uriah from a Gemara with respect to a poil. Again, I don't want to go into the details of the Gemara, but this is a Gemara in, uh, in Baba Metzia, Daf uh, Pei Tesamadalev. And the discussion of the Gemara is, what can a poil eat? Um, there's a halacha, that's a worker, a poil, can eat from the produce that they are producing in their work. It's considered a, uh, a right, an automatic default right of a worker. And the Gemara there says that a, a farmhand who milks animals is not allowed to drink from the milk that they produce, because this is a halacha that only applies to gedole kaka. If you are a diamond cutter, you can't eat from the diamond chips that you cut. And this is a halacha that only applies to, uh, um, to gedole kaka. So uh, Tosus proves from that that, uh, um, that uh, 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 milking milk is not considered gedole kaka. So these are the questions that we face. Now, going one by one through both of them, how can we answer Rashi? So the first answer we can give to Rashi is what Tosus already stressed. Rashi holds that we do that uh, there is Disha even with things which are not gedole kaka. Answer number two, and this is pointed out by the Chassam Sofa on our uh, Gemara. Is, is a very beautiful point of logic, which is it's possible and perfectly feasible that cholov milk is not gudule kaka, and a para the animal is gudule kaka. Maybe the switch occurs at that juncture. The animal is gudule kaka because the animal feeds off the ground. However, that which the animal produces is one stage too removed, and therefore the cholov is not gudule kaka. And therefore we can answer both sources. Mafarik or dosh. I'm doing in the animal, I'm breaking open the husk of the, the wheat, I'm breaking open the, the, or extracting from the animal, I'm separating from the animal. So the dosh, the mafari, takes place in the animal, the malach is done in the animal, the work I do is in the animal. The result, the cholov, is in the milk. And the milk is not a produce, which is gudele kaka, and therefore the poil, the worker, can't eat it. So this is just a nice point of logic. It gets us back to an old chakira that we've met on several occasions, which is why it's uh, a point worth thinking about, which is actually, what is the malacha in? So I remind you, for example, when we spoke about zoma and koitza. So zoma is uh, pruning, that's a malacha in the tree. Koitza, when you pick the, when you, again, you break a branch off a tree. You could be doing that for pruning, you could be doing that for koitza, as part of the Gemara previously. Koitza would seem to be a malacha in the branch, you're producing the branch. Zoma pruning would be a malach in the tree, or you're, you're rectifying and improving the tree by pruning it. So here we get an interesting chakira in Hilchas Dosh. Is it a malacha in the object, or is it malacha in the result, the, 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 the juice or the liquid or whatever it is, the food that is squeezed and extracted out of its container? And this isn't just an abstract chakira, but seeing this chasm sofa made me think of halacha ramaisa. What happens if I extract something from non gedolei kaka, but where the, the juice is gudule kaka, the opposite way around. Well, what happens if I extract something from that isn't gudule kaka from something that is gudule kaka? So this isn't enough min and chodiv, because everyone agrees chodiv milking is osa. The shahid is which malacha it is. But what happens if I can dream up a scenario which isn't chodiv? And this is discussed by the postkin. If I have a garment full of juice or water, and I want to squeeze the water out of the garment, which we take to be soichet. Now, how and in what sense is the liquid gudule Kaka, it's water. Water is not gedolei kaka. Does it make a difference if the garment is made from gedolei kaka? For example, it's um, flax or, 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 um, or linen or something of the sort. And this is discussed by the postkin. This is a uh, uh, prima godam and others. So this is a very real question. Whereas if there is such a rule, if we paskin indeed, that dosh is only with gedolei kaka, where is this, um, what would be the rule about uh, um, a garment which is gedolei kaka and uh, the juice that's being extracted is water which is not um, kaka. how would we uh, paskin in that case? Where is the malacha taking place? Is the malacha taking place in the garment, or is the malacha taking place in the juice which is extracted? Um, either way, that's a broader topic than what we can cover now. i just share with you the Hassan Sofa as a, a beautiful um, example of clear thinking. Um, it's possible that there's a distinction. Tosis may be right that with the pile it's not gedode kaka, and nonetheless with the milk, that may simply mean the milk is not gedode kaka, but it may allow the animal to be gedode kaka. Question. Sorry, Gary. Um, we've considered two approaches to handling this, but couldn't we just say that for the purpose of 
uh, dash on Hilchot Shabbat, the definition, you know, the, the need for Kedule Kaka, the, the definition of Kedule Kaka is different from the need in terms of a work or allowed, being allowed to eat produce. Yes, it is possible. Um, it is possible that Kedule Kaka means lots of different things and is therefore defined in different ways also. In other words, to a degree, um, you know, the, the relationship between an object and growing from the grounds is a spectrum term. Um, to a degree, it means directly growing from the grounds, and to a degree, it means further from the grounds. Um, there are indications of this with respect to Master Shani, where you can buy an animal with, in Master Shani, very briefly, you take the fruit, which you grow. You have to take the fruit up to your shrine. If you're unable to take the fruit up to your shrine, it will go moldy on the way you redeem it onto coins. You take the coins up, and then you can buy anything there. Um, can you buy uh, animals with it? In that respect, maybe an animal is enough for it. it it's, it's a fraught topic. Um, it's, Thank you. There are possibilities that the time itself is a little unclear. Could it also just could we just go back and also could it be mefaric as also a term with multiple possible meanings and if you're mefaric may well be a malacha but if you're dealing with it in dates it's a told of dash and if you're doing it in cows it's a told of something else. Okay, so in Rabbeinu Tam that is a feasible, uh, a tenable position. Um, when Rabbeinu Tam here says that mefaric is mamachik is a uh, smoothing, and therefore the malacha of cholev is mamachik, it is unclear whether he also means that with respect to the date, which is difficult. How can the date, when the Gemara says that picking a date is, is mafarik, can he also mean that? The maram on our Gemara, um, at the back of the Gemara, learns that that's what Rabbi Nittar means. However, there is a, a, a significant way of drawing a distinction between the two. Rabbi Nittar wrote another halachic work called the Sefer Yosha, in which he uh, um, he says that the two terms are different. He doesn't mean that. Um, I mentioned the Sefer Yosha to you now. I didn't mention it last week when we discussed this idea because I discovered it only in between when I was looking at the Chassam Sefer and the Chassam Sefer. I didn't mention this Chassam Sefer now. A different Chassam Sefer references your point also. That maybe Mepharic means different things in different contexts. However, and this is crucial, it doesn't help us with respect to Chodev because Rashi and the Rambam and the Rif and the Rosh learn Mepharic both here and with respect to Chodev as being a told of Dosh. And that's the crux of the question. That if you want to learn consistently the time of Farik, as Rashi does, then you have a problem because in both cases it means Dosh. And this is explicit in Rashi and the Rambam. Rashi um, here and Rashi and Tzadi Hay in the Gemara of Chodev and uh, the Rambam in, in his Mishnah Torah and so on and so forth. So this is the, the confusion we face. Philip and I saw uh, a, a view which said that Dash as the Av is to have specifically to have gedule karka, but while you whilst for a tolda you only need dimyon, so for mafarik you don't need. I mean the the cow is sufficiently a dimyon of uh, gedule karka, and so told for the tolda you can ha you can ensue. Uh, where, where did you see that idea? Oh, uh, Philip, do you remember where it was? Who who gave that idea? Philip, you're on you're on mute, Philip. Philip, you're on mute. Yeah. Where, uh, we remember we, who it was. We were going through the Encyclopedia of Talmudic. Uh, do you, do you remember who it was? Who? Okay, I, I will share this idea. I just wondered where you had seen it. I'll, I'm going to get to the idea in a few moments. Yeah. Um, at the end of the last year, I mentioned this idea briefly, and I'm going to revisit it now. In, 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 give, give me a couple of minutes, and I will reveal it. I was just curious where you saw it, but I, I don't want to spend. If you don't remember, I don't want to spend time now just because of time pressures. Okay. So these are, are um, in Rashi, these are possible answers. Again, just the maths of the sukya. Already really alluded to in Tosis. Either Rashi could paskan that Dosh doesn't need Gudule Kaka, or Rashi could paskan that Cholev is a cow, is Gudule Kaka. The problem is when we get to um, the Rambam and Halach Lamaisa, the Rambam says explicitly that Dosh does need to be Gudule Kaka, but okay, maybe the Rambam holds that a cow is called Gudule Kaka. The Shulchan Oruch, however, says that Puskins that Dosh is only Gedule Kaka, number one, and at least with respect to the Malacha of Teichin, of grinding, the Shulchan Aruch says that a, um, an animal, if you grind meat, it's not Gedule Kaka, it is not Gedule Kaka, and therefore um, you are uh, your, your potter. Meaning to say that the Shulchan Aruch seemingly says explicitly that meat, an animal, is not Gedule Kaka. In which case we're in a mess, because the Shulchan Aruch also Puskins that Cholev is Misham Dosh. Mishum Afarik, which is Mishum Dosh. So you can't have, those, those three facts don't go together. You can't say an animal is not Kedule Kaka, and Dosh only applies to Kedule Kaka, and Cholev is because of Dosh. That's the problem we face. Now again, even though I saw this question asked in Achronim, just for the interests of, of um, integrity, 
that there is a ma there is a mathematical again the maths of the question is not entirely accurate. One could distinguish between meat and an animal. It's possible that an animal living, breathing, is gudule kaka because it grows from the ground, and meat, the produce, is not gudule kaka because it's already been changed into a machel. And let me give you an example of this idea. Um, there are certain animals which uh, the meat is osa bahana. Um, nonetheless, it doesn't mean you can't. Um, in, in fact, uh, um, let me give you another example. The Allah is you can't trade with non kosher meat. However, you can trade in horses, because a horse isn't yet non-kosher meat. A horse is a horse, it's an animal. Once it's killed, it then becomes meat, and now you have the lochos of the fact that it's osbachila, and that you shouldn't trade in it. So, um, th when an animal is killed, it turns into meat, and it's possible that the machal, the food product, is not gudur kaka, whereas the animal is gudur kaka. So there may be a way out of this, if, if one agrees with this concept. But I, I want to move straight on to a more basic or fundamental answer to the question, which is the answer that Paul's mentioned. And this answer dates back to very early in the history of the question. It is found in the Shuvah of Rabbi Avram ben Haramam, and this is a massively important Maramakam, and uh, one, one that, that we, we absolutely need to talk about. Um, ben Haramam, sorry? I just sent you a, a, a chat that gives the answer to the to words from... Ah, oh, okay, this is the Chuvah of Ram and Rambam, yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, and Sagi Peter's Talmudis, uh, Chuvah of Ram and Rambam, so, so this is the one I'm mentioning, great. So, um, this is a really important source, and um, I, I mentioned last time it's a source that's particularly precious to me because it was shown to me by my Rosh Hashiva, Rabbi Tzolovechik, who discussed these ideas. And Rebbe Ram, this is a letter from Rebbe Ram and Rambam, in which he's coming to the defense of his father, with a very analogous question. It's not identical to Hasuka, but it's a parallel question about the issue of um, Gedule Kaka. And um, Rabbi Ram ben Arambam is writing to Rabbi Donil Habavli. Rabbi Donil Habavli was a Rosh Hashiva in um, Bovel in Iraq, who asks effectively, uh, for the purpose of simplicity, I'm going to assume he asks our question. He asks a very similar question to our question. And I, I will try and post on the WhatsApp group the language of Rabbi Ram ben Arambam. I wish, I wish I'd done it, I would have done it before. Because you hear the you hear how incredulous he is about the question. He, he simply doesn't understand what the questioner asks, and it shows you the, the sort of different perspective on the topic, how a question, an assumption that Tosis makes. So this isn't just Rabbi Daniel Abavli, he's a chosh of uh, Rosh Hashiva, but isn't one of the sort of pantheon of Rishonim in that le league. It's not just Rabbi Daniel Abavli, it's Tosis who, who asks the question, and Rabbi Ram, who belongs to the base Medrash of his father, the Ramam, doesn't understand the question at all. And he says, that which you ask, It's not, it's not an appropriate question for anyone who understands what an av and a tolder is to ask this question. A tolder, even though it's similar to an av, it's not the av itself, and it's not from the av itself. And therefore, yesh hefresh benem, there's a, there's a question between them. And then he says, your language is inaccurate. Vishamat of um, that mafarik you are dosh, that which you say, the mafarik is dosh, ain't a It's not correct. You told me this, this quote, that mafarik is dosh, that's inaccurate. Mafarik is a tolder of dosh. It's not dosh itself, um, uh, etc. Veloy ola zel das otom. He said, no, no one, it never occurred to anyone to say such a thing. Um, that even though the chi of, of Chodiv is because of Dosh, um, the Ein Lark Shays Ben Tukarman, etc. So he says, no one, no one ever, until you, Daniel Ababi, asked this question, who ever thought that um, Mefarik is Dosh? Mefarik is a told of Dosh. And just because Dosh has this rule of Gedode Kaka, why not should Mefarik have this rule of Gedode Kaka? So, so this is a, a remarkable strength of feeling on the part of Rabbi Ram, Ben Aramam, and he doesn't really understand the question. He doesn't know what, what the questioner wants. You're, you're confusing two completely different things. You're bringing me a rule about Dosh, and you think it applies to Mefarik. Now, what this reminds us of is that, um, at least in the base of Medrash of the Rambam, if you think of a tolder as being a child, a subcategory, in the sense that it derives from the Av, one's misunderstood the concept. And we've said this before. A tolder is a separate malacha. How many malachas are there? We've already seen in the Rambam that the correct answer to the question is not 39. It's not even correct to say there's 39 obvious malachas, because both Ofer and Mavashel are obvious malachas. They're just under... Uh, they're, they're, they're co they're included in the list of Siddur of the Past as one thing, as Ofer, as baking. We treat Ofer and Mavashal are two different Malachas, and all the examples on our Omad, on Ayn Gimel Omad base, Hakoitza, Haboitza, Goda, Masik, Vahora, or, um, uh, um, 
all the cases where it says all of them mean this idea, this idea that they are co uh, malachas. Similarly, it's not true to say this is the only list of malachas. There are other malachas. There's mafarikas, the name of a malacha, etc., etc. Chazal understood that these are malachas. Where do they fall within the category of the 39 others? These are told us they fall under the 39 one of the 39 categories, but they are their own malacha with their own uh, definitions and their own rules that apply. And therefore, just because you find a malacha by mal- a rule by malacha A, how on earth should that be connected to malacha B? Dosh is a malacha, and mafarik is a malacha. Happens to be ma- mafarik is a told of dosh, but just because you find a rule by dosh that it should be because of the kaka, why on earth should you expect this rule to apply by mafarik? And never Ram and Ramam hears this question, which really is Tosis' assumption, as he just doesn't know what they want. You're, you're mixing categories. There's a category error here that doesn't make uh, any sense at all. And this is such an important Maramakam because it takes so far the, the uh, break, so far our prejudices or our assumptions that we come into the, uh, the sugya with. Um, and I, I mentioned this last week just to explain how are we meant to make sense of this idea. It brings one almost to despair. Everyone assumes Cholev is a Malacha, and yet we have six or seven suggestions of what Malacha Cholev is. Whether it's Kaita, or whether it's Dosh, or whether it's uh, um, Gozeis, or whether it's Teichin, or whether it's Boira. So, so, so how else does one handle such a multiplicity of, of opinions? And, and if no one's sure what Cholev is, well, maybe none of them are correct. Maybe it's not a Malacha at all. The Gemara says it is a Malacha. How, how are we meant to make sense? Well, which one is it? And the answer is, Cholev is a Malacha because it's Cholev. Now the question is, how do we explain which category of Malacha does Cholei fall under? Because I understood that Cholei was a Malacha because it was a Malacha, because it's Choshev enough to be a Malacha. And only if we can't find something that fits one of these uh, categories, um, will we uh, assume it's not a Malacha. Well, and I, I just want to draw to your attention the language of the Gemara um, here on the Sugya of, uh, of, of Cholei, on Tzadi uh, Hei Ahmed Aleph. Um, I want to, in fact, mention to you two Marumakomas. The first Marumakom is on the Sugya of, uh, of Cholev. Um, Rav Nachman Baguria Iklun Mahada. Boy, Mene, Cholev Mishum Mai Machaev. What Malachi Chaev for Cholev? Amenoi Mishum Cholev. The Malach of Cholev is Cholev. Machavit Mishum Mai Machaev. Machavit, what do you Chaev for? Mishum Machavit. Megavin, she's making. Mishum, where you build it into a block. Mai Machaev. Amenoi Mishum Megavin. Um, etc. So the, we have a Gemara, an, a, a Beis Medrash, Nahada. Um, who ask him what malacha? Ask him nachem magoria. What malacha are these? And his answer is what malacha is cholev? Cholev mishum cholev. Um, Megavin, she's making what malacha is it? Megavin mishum Megavin. You're, you're making a mistake when you're looking for another shame malacha with which to fit these malachas into. The answer is they're their own malacha. Cholev is mishum cholev. Megavin is mishum Megavin. Which malacha is this? After all, it's not one of the lamatas malachas. The answer is it's a tolda. Okay, now it's a tolda. Which category does it fit into? The answer is, whichever one you work out, Kota or, or, or Gozeis or, or Dosh, whichever Rishon you hold of, but it's his own shame Malacha. And therefore, the rule, as Rabbi Raman Ramam says, the rule of Enu Elu Bigudode Kaka doesn't apply in this, uh, in this case. May I ask a question? The, the Gemara does challenge that, though, doesn't it, then? And then say, <laughs> you're only saying this whilst you're in the marketplace. So that implies it wasn't such a good answer, I thought. It, that is correct, but you see the principle of the idea that there is a shame malacha which is independent. The Gemara's answer to the question is it's Mishra Mafarik. But what's Mafarik? The Gemara doesn't bother telling us what Mafarik is. The Rishonim have to argue what Mafarik is. And the answer is because Mafarik, Mishra Mafarik, Mafarik is its own malacha. I'm, I'm using this just as a metaphor to bring out the idea. What, what, what's the. Why we, if we're saying this malacha is a standalone malacha, and even if it's part of what we call the of, it doesn't mean that we're going to learn rules that apply to one, apply to the other, because it's a separate miracle. Then what's the nafkamina of which of the 39 of melachot it's a part of? Why, why are you putting the energy into this? Is it purely an intellectual act? No, and I'm delighted you asked me this, because um, I would love everyone to do Chazorah on this over Shavuot. This brings us back to the very first top of our Omud, um, top of Ein Gilom Omud base, 
in which the Gemara discusses why do you bother, really asks your question, why do you give the number of, uh, number of Malachas? And the Gemara says, And we get into the discussion, if you do an Av and a Tolda together, you're only Chai of one punishment, one Chatos. And therefore, which category it falls on de- determines your only chaya for each malacha. The, the, again, there's a chiddush over here. The normal rule is if I do the same avera twice, the helam echad, in one shogeg, I forget about this avera, I'm only chaya of one chatos, even though I repeat again and again avera. With malachas, the, there is such an opinion that says the same as Shabbos. If I do 39 malachas, I'm only chaya of once, because I've been over once, no sasakal malacha. But we don't learn like that. We learn that each malacha is its own category. The Gemara understands this only applies to others, and therefore it's important to understand which category to oldest fall in, in order to um, know how they work in terms of categories of shogeg. Um, number one. Number two, it may be relevant to Hasra. Have a look at, uh, um, yeah. have a look at uh, the, the, the Toysus with Divra Maskal Mishum. So there's two possible Maskaminas. The rule is with Hasra, you have to give someone Hasra for the very they're going to do. If someone is murdering someone and you say to them, don't murder, you'll be chayv misa because you're a gazan and you're a thief, they're not chayv in Nasra. You have to tell them the correct avera. What happens with Shabbos? Can you be mazhi them just the Shabbos or do you have to mention the malacha? What happens if you mention, mention the wrong malacha? Again, have a look in Tosis about this. So, um, this, this isn't an uh, intellectual exercise. This is very nagela halacha. But nonetheless, Rabbi Raman Raman says, don't take it too far. Don't think it means to say that a tolda is synonymous with an av. Just, there's one other example of this uh, concept which is a Gemara late in Kuf Lamad Ches um, A Gemara actually we discussed when we learned the Sukhya of Bora on, on the next Omad, on Ayn Dalad Omad Aleph. Now the Gemara there is discussing Meshamer. Meshamer is separating wine from its sediments. And the process of separation of wine from its sediments doesn't translate easily across into the process of um, the three Malachas that we looked at that are somewhat analogous to each other in the context of grain production, Bora and Merakid, etc. Now, there's a machlokas there in the Gemara about which Av is Meshamer, the told of Meshamer Shaykh to. Um, and the way Rashi learns the Gemara is that everyone agrees it's connected to the Malacha of, it's a told of the Malacha of Merakeid, um, both Rabba and Reb Zeyra there in the Gemara. And Rabba is Machadish that it's also connected to a second Malacha to the Malacha of Boreh. Meaning to say that according to Rabba, there's one melacha of tolda is a of 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 Mishame is a tolda of two melachas. Why? Because Mishame is its own thing. It isn't boreh. It isn't meraki. It is not one of the melachas. The, the process of of separating sediments from wine is different to the process of refining wheat, and it doesn't translate across. And therefore, it's its own shei melacha. And therefore, it can be a tolda of two others. Now, what does this mean? If a tolda is derived from an av, this doesn't make sense. Because the malachas are different. Uh, which one does it derive from? Which one does it fit into the category of? However, if we understand that wine processing is different to wheat processing, and therefore the differences, I'm not going to repeat this again, listen to the shear then as to why it doesn't translate across from grain into wine. Therefore, it's possible that it is a separate malacha, which is a tolder of both. Now, why something? Uh, why we don't find a suggestion therefore that cholev is the tolder of many malachas, I don't know, and uh, perhaps because each rishon didn't hold that was relevant, but the concept that something can be a tolder of two malachas um, again, only makes sense as per Rabbi Ram and Haramam if we understand that a told is its own shame malacha, it's its own category of malacha, which is nonetheless linked and subsumed with respect to Asran, with respect to Karbonus in a Shogeg case, to one particular Av. I'm running out of time and I, I want to finish off the, the topic now. Um, two more points just very briefly to say. One is what Rabbi Ram doesn't clearly define for us, and I don't know the answer really to this question is, when do I decide when something is mafarik, which is the tolda, and when do I decide that it's um, dosh, which is the av? So, for example, whenever we want to apply the rule that ain disha elu be kaka, that disha only applies to gedodei kaka, I can say, good, it's not dosh, but maybe it's mafarik. So when I extract the, the grain from the shell, is that dosh or is it mafarik? The answer is it's dosh, because that's the av. But then what makes it uh, um, mafarik? When the Gemara discusses whether chilozen is disha, say, okay, it's not disha, but it's mafarik. So I saw those who want to say that the answer is that uh, mafarik is, is when you're making something new, like with milking, dosh is when you're making, you're just extracting something which is already pre-existing, which is old. But then we get into a problem with these machbedos. The dates are already there. They're simply in a very tight cluster, and therefore they're hidden and this and covered over perhaps. You're not making something new through this extraction process. You're simply uh, revealing it, something that was already there. So I don't know the answer to the question of, okay, what is the difference, though, between mafarik and dosh in terms of what um, applies it? Finally, 
um, I just want to finish with one more, uh, one more question, which is um, in in Dosh, um, would this malacha apply to a, a feeding mother? Would this also be the malacha of Dosh um, or Mafarik because of the the love of Cholev? And I mention this simply because of the answer that's given by the Achonim, which is it doesn't apply because the baby is engaged in eating, and in the process of eating, eating is not a malacha. Again, we explained that. Um, a malacha is an asek, an involvement with a creative activity. The animal is eating, the, sorry, the baby sucking is eating, or, or an animal feeding off a mother for that matter is, is a suckling, is eating. This isn't a malacha. Malacha is producing something. This isn't a production of, of an entity that's going to remain. It's a bit like a more extreme version of, um, of boira derech achila, the heads of boira derech achila. I'm not doing boira, I'm not producing something to get an outcome. I'm simply engaged in the Ma'is Achila. The Ma'is Achila contradicts the concept of uh, the concept of a malacha. However, a, uh, a, a, a milking uh, a cow to produce milk, or for that mother, a mother um, uh, for that matter, a mother is expressing milk, this can come under the malacha of uh, of, uh, of of Dosh, Mafarik, and a mother who needs to express milk, the basis of that is that of health concern. But in that case, where they're expressing as opposed to feeding, that would indeed be a malacha, however allowed because of uh, health concern. And this is a, a fairly common halachic shayla that needs to be dealt with exactly what's the best way to express in a case of feeding um, in a halachically permissible manner. So I'm going to stop there. Um, there will not be a shir on Tuesday. Um, I would encourage everyone to take advantage of the uh, series of shirin that we have on there this week. Um, on Tuesday evening, Rabbi Emanuel Bernstein will speak and uh, pre shavuos share. In addition, the whole week we have the privilege of of, of top notch Shlomi Chomim in partnership with the base, who will be giving share nine thirty to ten o'clock every evening. Details on the website. But I will. I'm not in business of competing with these uh, fantastic Rashi Yeshiva who will be speaking to us this week, um, or with Rabbi Emanuel Bernstein speaking earlier. So the next shir Yitz Hashem we will resume. Um, or the next learning together more accurately we will resume next week on uh, Sunday Isra Chag. Um, however, I will not give a share then because we're starting a new sukya. From my point of view, we've, we've finished off this sukya. Um, maybe I'll speak to Adam during the week or, or via the WhatsApp group just to gauge whether people want one more t- chance to do Chazara on the sukya before we move on. But basically, we're now moving on uh, either from Sunday a week or Tuesday a week. We're providing you Mary McComot for us, so for the new sukya. Yeah, yes. If we, if we move on to the new sukya Sunday, I will provide you Mary McComot. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, so I wish everyone, if I don't see you, a good yom yeah. and a good chodesh. Be well. Good chodesh, Tom, and good chodesh, everyone. Gary, if you can stop. Good